So imagine this. You've got a holiday planned, weekend away, you know, your wife's looking forward to it, your friend's looking forward to it, everyone's been cooped up because of COVID, finally some downtime, and then you get that dreaded phone call at four o'clock in the morning and you realise all your plans are about to change. Jump in the car uh, and actually drive to the office. You know? So, you know, um, I think I uh, had a pair of board shorts on, you know, a T-shirt and a pair of flip-flops. <laughs> Um, so not exactly business uh, corporate attire, but uh, I, uh, I bring up the system and the system doesn't come up, all right? Uh, so, you know, as soon as you hit that console, all right, um, where you're getting the raw picture of what that machine's doing and you see this bootloader um, that says, you know, um, you've been hacked um, sort of thing, uh, you know, boom. You know, it's like a Scud missile going off. Um, you realise that, uh, okay, this isn't just a, a, an unplanned outage, this is a targeted, uh, targeted attack. Um, you're on the pointy end of the kebab knife. Well, I don't know if I was lucky or not, but uh, I was sleeping through the initial part of the attack, and I'm a deep sleeper, so I didn't find out until I got into the office. Uh, so I was, that morning I was looking forward to heading off a bit early uh, and going camping with the family for the weekend after all of that lockdown. Uh, I get into the office and I see Matt there and I think he's not supposed to be here. <laughs> he's supposed to be away as well. Uh, sure enough, he says, uh, we've been hacked. And I didn't really know what to think at that point because I'd never really been through a ransomware event or anything like that. Uh, I would go and walk over to his desk, he's got uh, radar open there, and sure enough, there's a big compromise there. Radar's uh, an AI-driven, uh, basically anomaly detection uh, software uh, hosted by Rubrik, in which uh, the metadata of activity with your files and such gets sent to Rubrik, uh, assessed based on AI that's been trained throughout the world, uh, and then alerting you to any anomalies. And, and that's particularly useful for ransomware attacks in which you have tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of files in the span of minutes uh, being encrypted or deleted in some cases like we experienced and really helps you assess the scope of the threat uh, and where you need to start targeting your recoveries. If there was one, you know, shining light at this point in time was it was a Friday. Um, so because we're a manufacturing organisation primarily, um, it's a half day. Um, so we weren't going to lose a full day of production, but we were going to lose um, a full day in terms of um, other areas of business. And I, I, at this stage, you know, I would be known to look at it for like 45 minutes and I could ascertain that this wasn't going to be a quick fix like previous ones. Because previous attacks um, were pretty one dimensional. So, you know, uh, and they're automated. There wasn't a human being or a set of human beings at the other end of the barrel pulling strings. Um, and this time there were. We were profiled. Um, and uh, what, what, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, they looked at our business um, and they took their time. They didn't attack us directly, right? They, they found a trusted source um, that we trusted implicitly. You know, it was an email, um, it looked legit. Um, and really, it was legit because it came from uh, the right email address, the right account, um, in the right format. Um, it just had one slight detail. The, uh, the link that they usually use to send us um, purchase orders didn't go to them, it went somewhere else. Two weeks later, um, you know, they have, uh, you know, they've logged into the system. Um, they've looked for uh, elevated rights via vulnerability, so they, they've been very good at catching us out on a patch cycle. So, like most organisations, you know, we uh, do patch cycles monthly. Um, they found a vulnerability that got them elevated rights um, to, to the network. Uh, then they uh, could push that information back to themselves in the Netherlands, um, and then they tiered the attack and they kicked it off at 2am um, when they knew no one was going to be around. They're smart, right? So th these things come in waves. So the attack, um, I would say, had the first wave, which is the one on Friday morning that you know, I walked into at work, um, and we cleaned it up. Well, we thought we cleaned it up, because then came the second wave at 8 o'clock at night. Just as we're about to pack up for the day, 
We were pretty exhausted. We've just pulled a lot of man hours and suddenly everything starts going down again. The next day, uh, we're pretty much flat out just trying to recover and again, we get to a point where we think we've, we think we've killed it. Then that night, Matt and I just, just a little curious. We thought we might just try and log in remotely. And uh, sure enough, we can't get in. And uh, pretty scary moment. So Matt goes into the office and sure enough, compromised again. I take it quite personally. Um, you know, you get these uh, six degrees of emotions uh, almost, right? So uh, there's, there's anger, um, there's, all, there's regret um, because you feel like maybe you've had a failing uh, in yourself um, and you haven't led your team correctly. Uh, but they go to the wayside pretty quick um, because really you come to the realisation that you've just got to get on with it um, and you almost get this rah-rah feeling of <laughs> we've got this. Um, uh, you think you've been successful in, in attacking us um, but here comes the counter punch. All right? and, uh, um, with rubric, we understand that we've got a very good right hook um, and we're going to come back and come back hard. And at the end of the day, um, this is just going to be an inconvenience. It's just a matter of how big an inconvenience it's going to be. I had my guys, it was like, I don't know, uh, 1 a.m. in the morning. We're at the whiteboard. We've planned it out. We've got all the moving components in place and we've got rubric ticking away, recovering all our stuff. Um, and you know, I just had this you know, blinding flash of the obvious. You know, this war's won. You know, it's not, the, you know, the battles are over, we've been fighting battles all day, but we're at this point now where I can happily declare the war is won, all right? There might be a couple of more cleanups that we've got to do, but I knew that uh, people's jobs were safe. Now, I'll be honest, uh, there's a lot of pressure on me as a, as a CIO um, when We've got no production happening in, in a factory that employs, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people um, and I, I've got to send those people home. Um, I take a personal hit on that, you know, I, I feel quite personally obligated to those people on forklifts and, and you know, nail guns and running our, our automated saws and stuff that, um, you know, their livelihoods are in my hands. So I put a lot of personal pressure on myself. But the business puts a lot of pressure on me, our customers put a lot of pressure on me, even though they don't even know that they're exerting it, um, to get us back into the, in, into the, the thrall of things. You know, there was one organisation that um, it took them six months to recover and they didn't do any local manufacturing for a month, you know, and uh, my managing director pulled me aside over a beer and he said, wow, I, I don't even want to know what the world looks like. I don't even want to think about what the world would look like if we didn't do manufacturing for, for a month. Um, you know, that would be a, you know, a serious um, detriment to our business and one that we might not be able to recover from. Um, it, you know, so it's not just a, rubric is not just about recovering from ransomware. Rubric is the difference between survival and non-survival in this new digital age. Well, even as a medium-sized organisation, uh, we get attacked all the time, but in order to actually keep the 99.99% of attacks out of the way, uh, we really need to ensure that we're always strengthening our security uh, in line with our policies. And so technology is always changing, but people are always changing as well. And so our threat landscape uh, is always evolving. I think it's just a evolving sort of uh, um, mission of white hats versus black hats and, and how we overcome each other. Um, you know, I would say that uh, um, human people are still your number one defense. Um, but when they fail, uh, you've got to have things like rubric there um, to save the day. They've only got to get it right, you know, for a minute in a day. Um, we've got to get it right 24 seven, 365, right? Uh, if one of our staff, and you know, there's thousands of them, um, if only one of those people makes a mistake uh, and gets it wrong, um, we, we've got a problem. Rubric as a company has been amazing, right? The support uh, that we get from Rubric, um, and during the attack, you know, Dale's reaching out to me, um, who's our, you know, our engineer at Rubric um, on, on a local scale, and he said, hey, um, is there anything I can do to help? You know, and, and I'm responding to him on WhatsApp saying, no, no, Aaron's in love with this thing. Um, he's got it, he's cool. You know, but there's this constant communication. I think that's um, 
a big part of confidence in a product is having confidence in the people. So, you know, I've got confidence in, in Rubrik as the technology um, and the digital stuff it does, but I've also got confidence that I've got a support network from Rubrik that have got my back and they've got my team's back. So, you know, Aaron went from, oh, I've heard about this Rubrik thing. We've had it in the company forever. It was here before I got here. I've done my apprenticeship time here, but I've not really been exposed to it. And then this happens and because it's so intuitive and so easy to use and so fast, he could just latch onto it and run with it, you know, and then he puts in a couple of support calls because he had some questions about the APIs and how do we recover this stuff easily on a bulk level. Um, so I don't want to just recover one or two files here. I want to recover, you know, hundreds of thousands of them. How, how can I do this programmatically um, so that, you know, I'm not clicking buttons in the interface all the time and, you know, support work with him to make sure all these things happen, you know, and he, he's going, man, I, I love these guys. This was the first large scale event in which I'd used Rubrik, and yet I was all over it. Really, it was uh, particularly intuitive, uh, and wherever I had any knowledge gaps, I'd just hop on with Rubrik support, and straight away they have six guys on a call with me uh, in the AMs, so any time zone, uh, and just like that, we're recovering. Uh, entire servers, uh, entire file sets that I'd never even knew Rubrik was capable of. You know, one of the key elements of uh, uh, any ransomware attack is pressure, right? and, and how quickly and overwhelmingly they can apply it. They saw us clean up. They knew we used Rubrik, right? They uh, sent us an email that said, hey, we've been monitoring you, we see you recovered really well, um, you used Rubrik, that's really smart but we've got your data and we're going to sell it, so still pay us, right? Um, and that creates worry because they don't just send that to, to the IT guys, they send that, send that to everybody in the company they can find an email address for, right? So you get all these phone calls and, and uh, worried people. Um, but then you start to go, well, hang on, um, do they really have our data? Because um, I find that a bit hard to believe because that would be an awful lot of data, right? They're saying they've got um, you know, financial information, they're saying they've got um, P&Ls, you know, customer database, all this sort of stuff. And you go, well, hang on, I know what data I've got, I know where it is, and I know they can't get to it. Um, because we use tools like Sonar that have data governance that tells us where things live and, and how they live. So then you go to the firewall records and go, well, actually, give me a report of all data that went out of my network. And you find out, oh, crap, they got 13 gig of data. But then you realise, well, actually, it was just ping traffic. Um, it wasn't actually data at all. Um, so they don't actually have anything. They're realising they're not going to beat us on the technical side. We've got Rubrik, we've got these recovery tools that can help us recover no, no matter how much they try to kick us down. We managed to get reports from our ISP and we know they haven't got our files. They're bluffing. Um, and so when they send through that email, to us, yes, it's initially scary, but it's also an indicator that they're desperate. They know they can't crack us. And so one last Hail Mary, start deleting files instead of encrypting them uh, and try to make the executives a little worried, but we're good. I think in terms of a singular um, event that, that uh, um, clinched it um, was being able to recover all the machines with Rubrik. Right, that, that was the, um, the saving grace. Right? That, that was the hallelujah moment where we knew that we were going to be fine because uh, they just couldn't get to it. It was immutable, um, they locked out of it. Um, you know, it was, you know, um, uh, you know, a universe too far for them. Um, you know, the access that they had managed to achieve through using exploits and stuff wouldn't work on Rubrik. Um, it's one of the reasons we, we, we purchased it in the first place, that it was a totally standalone, um, you know, walled garden approach, if you will, um, that was easily to get back from, right? It was fast. Uh, so. Uh, and that, that in itself was very, very significant. And the key, the key point that underpinned the recovery is, is having it. Without it there, um, I don't want to think about it.